An update on the COVID-19 situation here. One community case was among the 34 new infections confirmed today. Today's count is the second straight day of recent highs. The remaining 33 cases were imported and had been placed on stay-home notices or isolated when they arrived. Meanwhile, as of March 29th, more than 375,600 people have been fully vaccinated against COVID-19. The fear of an injection or the needle itself is real for some people. And this may be a hurdle for them in getting the COVID-19 vaccine. Now, other methods of administering the vaccine are currently being explored like through the nose. Well, in Singapore, homegrown biotech firm Esco Ester is working with a US company to develop a vaccine to be delivered as a nasal spray. The firm's chief executive said the chimeric vaccine made by merging proteins from different viruses is currently undergoing animal studies. Meanwhile, last Thursday, Oxford University said it's launching a study of immune responses of a nasal administration of its vaccine developed with AstraZeneca. And last week, China approved an, an inhaled vaccine for clinical trials. Infectious diseases experts here told the Straits Times that COVID-19 vaccines, which are administered through the nose and mouth, could potentially be more effective in blocking the virus at the upper respiratory tract and reducing its transmission. But they stressed that the safety and efficacy of such vaccines still have to be proven in clinical trials. Well, Professor Ui Eng Yong from the Emerging Infectious Diseases Program at Duke NUS Medical School noted that there are currently no licensed nasally delivered vaccines in Singapore. But there are licensed oral vaccines like the liquid polio vaccine and typhoid vaccine that comes in pill form. We're pleased to have Professor Wee with us now to share more. Professor, nasal vaccines have been under development for decades. What's the general sentiment of the global medical community? Are researchers taking it seriously or is it a newfangled innovation? Well, first of all, thanks for having me. Uh, the nasal vaccine uh, and oral vaccine, what they can do that you know cannot be done through an injection is that they can stimulate the immune response to in the mucosa. So in, in other words, in the lining of the airway in the in the and in the gut, right? Mm -hmm. Um and so therefore when we ex when we encounter these viruses in when we inhale them or when we ingest them, then the immune response will be more effective in blocking infection. Uh, and hence the spread of, of uh, the virus in our body. Whereas if you were to give the vaccine uh, via a needle into the muscle, then you essentially will develop good immune response, but it's now trying to block the spread. So here you have a chance of blocking the actual infection right in the, uh, in the first in the out outset. And because of that, there's a greater chance that we can therefore uh, completely eliminate uh, any infection at all. Uh, and therefore uh, would not allow the virus to even say infect someone who's been vaccinated but remain asymptomatic because then that person could potentially spread the virus. So, so uh, the chance of uh, herd immunity uh, increases with uh, mucosal uh, delivered vaccine. Right, then Prof, you know, having said that, um, and the, I guess the usefulness of uh, this type of, you know, nasal vaccine, do you think that the medical community globally, you know, is taking this seriously as we uh, asked before, or is it being considered still, you know, an innovation that's relatively new? Mm. I think people are taking it seriously, but of course there are issues associated with delivering uh, the vaccine, especially nasally. Uh, I mean, imagine if you were to pump spray something into your nose, very often you will sneeze because it's, you know, it, it will irritate the the lining of our nose. Um, and if that happens when you're being given a vaccine, then it's, if, and you, you, if you sneeze out part of the vaccine, then effectively you have reduced the dose that you will be given, right? Or that you will have received. Um, and that may lead to poorer uh, quality immune response and, and, and it will be it defeats purpose of you know, what we want to achieve with the vaccine. So obviously there needs to be proper trials to look at, you know, are there or what proportion of people will actually sneeze depending on how it's delivered or other things, right? Or whether it triggers a, 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 a you know, um, flow of mucus and stuff like that that we could wash the vaccine out as well. So there are a lot of practical issues that need to be tested and, and overcome uh, before this vaccine can be applied uh, widely uh, in, in the normal population. 
Now, we know that these types of vaccines are still undergoing clinical trials. But, Professor, weighing the pros and cons, you know, on one hand, nasal vaccines are easier to administer. On the other hand, they are uncommon. When it comes to countering vaccination hesitation, how will nasal vaccines fare in the take-up rate, you think? Yeah, that's a great question. I think it's one of those things that we probably have to um, evaluate in the real world setting. Uh, you know, for instance, there are two kinds of uh, anti-influenza drug, right? The one that we know very well is Tamiflu. That's the one that you swallow, but that's actually another drug that you give directly into the nose. It's called Relenza. And actually, in terms of the lab studies between the two, Relenza actually works better than Tamiflu. But nobody hears about Relenza. Everyone knows about Tamiflu mm. because people prefer to swallow their medicine rather than have it sprayed into their nose. So at the end of the day, it could come down to that, right? What actually people prefer. So of course, the thinking is that, you know, needle cause pain. People are some, some people are afraid of needles mm. um, and therefore something that's sprayed into the nose may, you know, be, be more... Uh, uh, accepted more widely accepted than a needle, but that may not necessarily be the case, right? That actually, at the end of the day, some may prefer may say, "Hey, I'll take the pain rather than all the sneezing and all the uh, runny nose and all that that you might get with with a, um, a nasally delivered vaccine." I think the orally delivered vaccine is probably the easiest because you just swallow it. Um, but remember, the the vaccine now has to pass through the stomach which is very acidic before it can get to the small intestines where perhaps it, it will then um, you know, meet the immune system and, and generate the right responses. So it must be stable enough to get through that low acidic environment in our stomach. So again, that's a big challenge in how you would deliver a vaccine like that uh, into the intestine. So, so there are challenges to overcome. It's not that straightforward um, uh, for, for a vaccine like COVID. Well, thank you very much, Professor Ui. Always a pleasure to have you on the show. Of course, we've been speaking to Professor Ui Eng Yong from the Emerging Infectious Diseases Program at Duke NUS Medical School.